Last week, Labour MP Dawn Butler announced her constituency office was having to close due to an escalation in threats of violence and racist abuse against her. Some of the shocking details of the experience of her and her staff were shared in an op-ed written by Butler, published in the Metro on Saturday. I'm just going to read out a few of the examples um, of abuse she has received. I mean, it was very, <laughs> it was a very comprehensive article. This is someone who has been you know, victim of waves and waves of abuse, especially from the far right. Let's go through some of them. So a solid granite rock was thrown through her high street office window. On a separate occasion, staff arrived at work to find the entire shop front had been smashed. These are all things that have happened to Dawn Butler. Someone was arrested for making a bomb threat. Another was arrested and went to court for threatening to smash the office up. A member of Butler's team was verbally threatened with violence for which the person was again arrested. This isn't just, you know, this is people getting arrested. This is serious threats. Um, another, staff, another staffer, when standing at the door of the office last year, was told by a stranger, I will smash your head in. Um, some staffers have unsurprisingly been diagnosed with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and take regular counselling to cope just for working in the office of, a, of an MP, of a member of parliament. Um, and a staff member was so traumatized by one violent incident that he bought a stab vest to wear discreetly under his clothes. Really tragic stuff. And um, we're going to get up a couple of quotes directly from Dawn Butler. Um, here she's talking about what she says were some of the worst incidents to occur. Um, so she says, an aggressive man armed with a golf club knocked on the door wanting to speak to me. A member of my staff, not realizing that the man, what the man was carrying, answered the door and soon became engaged in a physical tussle with him to protect me and remove him from the office. It was a terrifying moment. If reading this you feel shocked, just imagine how frightened my brave staff member must have felt. I've received anonymous calls from someone at 5 a.m. threatening my head would end up on a stake. And just a few weeks back, I got death threats from the far right telling me that come the revolution, they'd be coming for me first. Um, again, there's more. So last, last, last year, Butler received death threats whilst being physically assaulted on the underground by a woman she had met at her office surgery. So at the time, the Metro reported that Butler was followed carriage to carriage by a woman who told her, I will kill you. Terrifying stuff. Um, and describing how this incident has affected her behavior, Butler said, traveling alone from parliament, often late at night on quiet tube carriages is really scary. I often try to disguise my appearance through fear of being recognized. The person who attacked me went to prison. I would like to thank the members of public that came to my aid that day. And this is really shocking. So this was something that was in the Observer on the weekend. I think this is maybe the most shocking part of the whole story, actually. Um, so she says there, I raised all this with Parliament and I was told that the abuse I was receiving wasn't enough to warrant any special security measures. I was really nervous about travelling and anxious about taking public transport after that attack. How much abuse do I have to get before it was enough? So you can you can see all of that, all of those examples that Dawn Butler has, has given there this weekend. That would be terrifying. You know, this is someone who's put herself on the front line, public service. She's been elected as an MP. We always say, you know, the, Boris Johnson always say, we're so proud that we've got such a representative group of people in Parliament. But is it really fair for us to be asking black women to stand for parliament and when just existing in that role gets them torrents of far right abuse threats when people have to be arrested because they've been, you know, because the threats have been credible. And then when you say, look, I've put myself in this difficult position. Can you give me any support for this? So, no, no, I mean, the threats don't really seem 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 serious enough. Um, Ash, I'm going to go to you because you're no stranger to this kind of thing. I suppose, first, what do you make of all this? But also, what can be done about it? What should we be demanding? I mean, so I think the first thing we have to do is make sense of it because this stuff isn't random. Um, it's the result of, I think, it's especially worsened uh, because of Jeremy Corbyn becoming leader of the Labour Party. There was an all-out war on him and those who are close to him waged by the media. And it wasn't just about things like internal party management or perceived competence. He was presented as someone who wanted to destroy Britain. And he was uh, smeared and traduced on the basis of a perceived proximity to people of colour. Um, if you remember in that Dangerous Hero was it Tom Bauer book? It's complete mm -hmm. trash. Um, but one bit talked about the sort of tide of human m misery of Somalis and Sri Lankans and Bengalis going into his office. So it really was about presenting people of colour as themselves um, an embodiment of this sort of dangerous anti-nationalist politics. And so then when you have high profile black women 
knowing everything that black women go through in terms of misogynoir, um, they become, uh, you know, heightened targets for this kind of abuse. Diane Abbott received over half of all abusive tweets sent to MPs during the 2017 election. And it's because black women, uh, as Malcolm X famously said, the most unprotected, disrespected woman in America is the black woman. Well, I think that's pretty true for the UK as well. Black women aren't seen as being deemed of protection in the same way that white women are. They're seen as being less than human, as being sort of, you know, dirty and monstrous and masculine, and it makes them, uh, you know, legitimate targets for violence. So the smears and attacks on Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party and the association with, with you know, anti-white racism, with, you know, Islamic extremism, uh, you know, with various sentiments against the British army and the British way of life, that means that the black women close to him become targets. So that's what happened. And I think that everyone who participated in that monstering of black female Labour MPs and the Labour Party more generally shares some responsibility for the for the treatment of Dawn yeah. Butler. In terms of what can be done about it, it's really difficult. It's really really difficult in an ideal world or no not even an ideal world in an ideal world this wouldn't be happening but the basic standards of parliament should be that it looks after and it protects its mps especially after what happened to joe cox um joe cox was attacked in her constituency i think it maybe it was after a constituency uh surgery and it was an example of you know random lone wolf terrorism but something which is made possible, nurtured by far-right propaganda. And I think that this environment of hostility, of you know the demonization of Labour under Corbyn and continuing the demonization of left-wing MPs, particularly left-wing MPs of colour, it's what you might call stochastic terrorism. So it's putting out stuff into the public domain, which makes the likelihood of random violence uh, increase. And so I think that's what's going on with Dawn Butler. The minimum should be that she should be offered full protection paid for uh, by the House of Commons. And that should be available for any MP of whatever political party whose life and whose well-being is in danger, whose staff are in danger. But I, I think it is taken less seriously because she's on the left of Labour and because she's a black woman. Um, you know, when Luciana Berger was being threatened, when she was you know, facing terrible anti-Semitic abuse. Rightly, there was national outcry about that. Um, when Laura Koonsberg had bodyguards accompany her to Labour Party conference, um, that again became a huge news story. So why is a black female MP who's been physically attacked, whose office has been attacked more than once, why is that sort of this tiny news story that nobody's I, talking about? Can I response to that. I mean, what's mm -hmm. interesting with Luciana Berger and, and she got abuse from all sides, but four men went to prison, I believe, uh, for threats made towards her. They were all from the far right. You know, th there's a really important point to be made here, which is that for the media's attention on the left, particularly under Jeremy Corbyn over the last five years, they have given the far right a real free pass on this. If you were to ask people, four men have gone to prison uh, with regards to criminal acts towards Luciana Berger, you know, what are their politics? Well, they're all Corbynistas, members of Momentum. And this is a really concerning thing because the far right, it's not a mass politics in this country, but it's a significant and I think growing presence. Uh, and we could talk, we'd do a whole show about about why. And yes, Dawn Butler was being subject to this abuse uh, and these threats and this assault. Yes, because she's black. Yes, because she's a woman. But I, I mean, I would say principally because she's those things and left wing, right? And as Ash said, uh, her proximity to Jeremy Corbyn. And, I, you know, I would go even further. Yeah, the responsibility for that lies with every single journalist and commentator and politician outside the Labour Party who said that Jeremy Corbyn is a threat to the British way of life. No, he wasn't. He was articulating by historical standards a perfectly vanilla social democratic uh, political offer. His only threat was to people like Jack Straw and Tony Blair by potentially uh, unveiling the secrets around things like uh, uh, torture, uh, extraordinary rendition, uh, collaboration with 
uh, criminal states, effectively, in, in the case of Gaddafi and, and, and Libya. Those are the people that had a great deal to, to fear from a, from a Corbyn government, not ordinary people. And I think, actually, the worst thing about it all is you see Jack Straw today go on Sky News and denigrate Jeremy Corbyn. I think people like Jack Straw actually also bear some responsibility here because when you have people who've been at the top of public life for 10, 15, 20 years saying that a certain subset of politicians, actually, in many instances, ex-colleagues, uh, are beyond the pale, illegitimate, have no place in public life. This is going to happen. This is a natural consequence. And we saw this happening in the general election. You know, there were multiple instances of Labour volunteers, members of the public who are canvassing for Labour, being assaulted, being hit, older women, uh, people who were disabled. Uh, and it got very little media scrutiny. Uh, and the reason why it was given very little media scrutiny is because they were advancing a politics uh, oh, that is deemed to be, like I say, beyond the pale historically, it isn't. We need to have a big conversation about this because as the coronavirus gets worse, we're going to have to ultimately recalibrate our, our sort of economic model in this country. And if this 25, 30% of the media, unhinged people, by the way, often people like Melanie Phillips, cited at length in the Anders Breivik Manifesto, people like Dan Hodges, uh, this is going to get worse. This is going to get worse. Uh, and so I think we need to have a big conversation about this in the Labour Party as well. What are we going to do? Like I say, it's all very well to say, oh, we need more women in Parliament, we need more black women, more trans women. If you're not going to give them support and security and resources and strength and solidarity, you, not only is that empty words, you're actually putting them in danger. You're putting them in harm's way. Uh, really deeply troubling. And I think people like Jack Straw, I think people like Alistair Campbell, I think they should apologise because they've made this a problem. They've helped make it a problem. I mean, I, I also want to quickly say that not every person who is totemic um, of this sort of, you know, the person from the left who is picked out and held up and demonized, they're not always a black woman or a woman of color. The perfect example of this is Owen Jones. Um, the way in which he's seized upon by figures got ranging from, you know, center left all the way to the far right as emblematic of everything that's wrong in politics, everything that's wrong in Britain, the way in people, which people share photos of him as an object of ridicule. It's not really about criticizing his politics. And, you know, knowing Owen, he would absolutely relish the chance to, you know, rabbit on and on and on about what he thinks the bright progressive tax policy would be like, or, you know, the particular history of, you know, militant in the 1980s. He would love that. It's actually about, you know, taking a gay man saying that he's whiny, he's not masculine, he's effeminate, um, you know, he's toxic, he's poisonous. And, in you know, it's that sort of, you know, it's, I mean, if you want to talk about Orwellian, it really is that five minutes hate. So holding him up as a totem to be, you know, spat at and denigrated. And that has real life consequences. It had real life consequences from him. Uh, you know, he'd been assaulted before, but, you know, last year on his birthday, he was beaten up. And it, just speaking personally, I feel it's just a matter of time before the same thing happens to me because I don't think it happens as often, but my image is used in a similar way. Uh, I've experienced when I was on a train back uh, late at night from Southampton after doing question time, a guy got on the carriage, uh, started yelling at me and sort of was on the seat next to me. And so I like sort of climbed around him, moved to a different carriage. Um, and I think the only thing that stopped him from hitting me was the fact that I was a woman uh, on her own. Uh, I think had I been a man, you know, had it been Owen in that position, something much nastier would have happened. But we shouldn't live in a country where if you're on the left and you're vocal, uh, physical assault, if not worse, feels like an inevitability. And I think what happened with Joe Cox, it got generally subsumed into a discourse about uh, civility and politeness. And then it became, if you were, you know, a leftist, you know, making fun of, you know, Dan Hodges on Twitter, that you were just as bad as uh, Thomas Mayer. And we didn't talk about the specific reasons why it was a Labour MP who became a target of that kind of violence. Um, it's, and I think it's, entirely irresponsible of uh you know the relevant authorities to deny specific protection to dawn butler after what happened to joe cox um what standard is it going to have to meet are you only going to take action when it's too late and then everyone can you know mourn and say how sorry they are um but the damage is done 
Can I quickly reply? I know we're, we're, we're carrying on a bit later than we normally would like. But... Go on super quick, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, you know, I had um, what I had said was once misrepresented um, by, you know, Red Raw and the far right. You know, I had people I had, uh, people around far right organizations come to my home and so on, making threats online and all, all sorts. The same weekend, you had people like Tom Watson, you had Neil Griffith, the Shadow Defense Secretary, saying I should be thrown out of the Labour Party, right? Giving that stuff legitimacy, you know, and they didn't care if what was being said was accurate or, or had, you know, what, what was the were the words being misrepresented was there a broader context they didn't care and again I, I have to go back to this on the on the left we have a, a critique we have a framework to understand these things it was only 10 years ago that these people said that you know people shouldn't be stopping stopping nick griffin some of these people shouldn't be stopping nick griffin appearing on bbc question time or that you know we shouldn't have demonstrations to stop the edl marching through whitechapel uh, again the question has to be asked are those people real allies in the fight against the far right or in this instance, actually, less than the fight, self-protection against the far right. It's a big concern. And I think many, or well not many, because there's not many of them, but, but I think, you know, some of the people I'm talking about, uh, senior people in the Labour Party, don't take it particularly seriously. I think if Owen Jones or Ash or I got, you know, beaten up, well, Owen has been beaten up, I, I don't think they, I'm, I'm sure some some of them, some people in, in the Labour Party would rejoice about it, which does tell you something deeply troubling is going on in terms of how they how they relate to the left